Since the day it became obvious that Ford made a fantastic move with the introduction of a small unibody pickup truck, the talk about other major companies joining the segment started. Logically, with such a high interest in this versatile and affordable pickup, other car makers don't see a reason why they wouldn't get a piece of the share in the fast-growing segment as well. Therefore, it's no surprise that the Jeep CEO is about to reveal the all-new 25K small pickup, which has the potential to outshine Maverick in many aspects and become one of the segment leaders. Old name, new design. Although primarily known for making attractive and capable SUVs and crossovers, Jeep also has a history of making pickups. And no, we are not talking about the Gladiator. We are talking about something that happened almost four decades ago. Back in the 1980s, Jeep management decided to offer a pickup version of the popular SUV Cherokee. That pickup was introduced in 1985 and named Comanche. So it's no surprise that, as a spiritual predecessor, it is going to borrow the name of the new model. Namely, the new pickup will almost certainly be called Comanche, but it will feature a slightly different design compared to the old ancestor, all in order to meet the demands of modern small pickup buyers. So the first thing that comes to mind is the platform. As a small unibody pickup, the new Comanche is expected to rely on Jeep's proven design solutions. In other words, it will most likely ride on the small wide 4x4 platform, like a couple of the brand's crossovers. But unlike the original, which was based on the Cherokee, the new Comanche will be smaller and, therefore, based on smaller SUVs, such as the Compass and Renegade. We expect many parts to be shared, maybe even in terms of aesthetics. But what's more important at the moment is the chassis and suspension setup, which would ensure a smooth, comfortable, and quite engaging ride, as you would expect from a crossover-based vehicle. The Compass combines McPherson at the front with the multi-link suspension on the rear end and offers pretty nice ride quality. The Comanche could feature the same setup, but we won't exclude the possibility of seeing a more basic setup such as a torsion beam in entry-level models to cut production costs and keep the starting price low. That's exactly what Ford did with the Maverick. Exterior Design Speaking of aesthetics, Jeep already presented the concept of a small pickup a few years ago, heavily influenced by the Renegade. But the problem with that concept is that it was imagined as a single cab pickup, which isn't something most buyers would go for. The production pickup would have to be larger and offer two rows of seats, and that's why it makes perfect sense to see it based on the Compass. After all, the Maverick is based on Escape, the Santa Cruz is based on Tucson, so we don't see a reason why the new Jeep Comanche wouldn't be based on the compact SUV like the Compass. That would bring many benefits in terms of mechanics. On the other hand, this would also mean a slightly more conservative design approach, with a front end that's more in line with the brand's current design language. That's actually a good thing if we consider that neither Maverick nor Santa Cruz is considered particularly visually appealing. The former looks dull and doesn't exactly follow the design philosophy of other Ford models, while the Santa Cruz feels a little bit over-designed with that Tucson borrowed face. So we presume that Jeep designers will look for the styling that slots between those two extremes. Interior. As we've just mentioned, it's hard to imagine a modern-day Comanche following the example of the original model. The market dictates something different, a versatile, family-friendly layout with a spacious and stylish cabin design. For that reason, a single-cab layout doesn't sound particularly likely. Instead, a crew cab Comanche will most likely be the only body style on offer. We expect to see a spacious cabin with two comfortable rows of seats that accommodate adults with ease. Besides space, there is the matter of interior quality and overall design. These days, even the old-school pickup trucks feature pretty nice interiors, so nothing less is expected from vehicles that are rather family cars than work mules. We presume that Jeep is not going to do any experiments, but rather to offer a familiar dashboard design with the same or very similar layouts as in the case of the Compass. The compact crossover was updated relatively recently, and now its cabin looks very nice, with elegant aesthetics fine materials, and a good portion of modern tech and convenience features. The new Comanche will need all that if Jeep wants to offer a competitive unibody pickup. Powertrain. In modern times, even truck drivers care about fuel economy, so such a high demand for Ford Maverick doesn't surprise at all. Logically, other small pickups are also expected to offer a respectable level of efficiency, and in the case of Jeep, this means there are few potential options on the table. The small wide platform supports all kinds of powertrain options, starting from the good old 2.4-liter inline-four, 
which could be offered in the most basic variants. But we are pretty sure that most drivers would rather go for the smaller and way more efficient 1.3 liter turbo 4, which puts out around 177 horsepower and quite a decent 210 pound-feet of torque. A pickup like this also deserves hotter versions, so we presume higher trim levels could also be offered with a 2.0 liter turbo 4, the same one that powers the new Dodge Hornet, with a max output of 268 horsepower. Speaking of Dodge's new compact SUV, it could also borrow the hybrid powertrain because that's another thing that will very likely become a segment standard. The Maverick impresses with its super efficient hybrid system, and Toyota's pickup will do the same. Jeep, on the other hand, would rather offer something less efficient but way more capable. That system is also based on a 1.3 liter turbo 4 engine, but gets significant help from the electric motor, resulting in a combined output of 288 horsepower. High output would be the only benefit, as we are talking about a plug-in hybrid system, which also includes a 12 kilowatt hour battery pack, which, in the case of Hornet, provides up to 30 miles of range in the EV mode. The new Comanche should offer similar autonomy. As for the transmission, there are a few options, starting from the good old 9-speed automatic. But let's not forget that the Compass recently got a new 8-speed unit, which seems to be a little bit more refined. Finally, the plug-in hybrid version would come with a 6-speed automatic from ASIN. Off-road performance. We are pretty sure that the new Comanche will have many strong points, but off-road performance is where it's really expected to stand out. Jeep is a company that's been mastering off-road performance for decades, and it's not easy to find a car maker that can keep pace with it in this aspect. So the new pickup would also benefit from these achievements. First of all, unlike the competition, which features an all-wheel drive system, the Comanche will come with a more capable four-wheel drive system, which offers different drivetrain modes, along with several selectable traction controls, to ensure excellent performance on all surfaces. What's also important to mention is that this system includes low gearing as well. But what's important to mention is that once engaged, this mode doesn't just bring low axle ratio, it also locks the axles and mimics locking differentials, which ensures equal amount of torque to be sent to all wheels. But a more rugged version could bring additional upgrades, including a genuine locking rear differential, along with other upgrades, such as all-terrain tires, skid plates, further suspension upgrades, and many more. Towing and payload capacity. With a unibody platform, we don't expect the new Comanche to offer some spectacular ratings. Still, we don't expect it to lag behind the competition either. This company knows how to make a capable vehicle and, in most cases, its models are more capable than their respective classmates. In this case, we definitely expect to see a notable advantage over Maverick, which definitely can't be called capable as most versions can't tow more than 2,000 pounds, while the most capable version is good for about 4,000 pounds. We expect that Jeep's pickup will exceed these numbers and probably be on par with the Hyundai Santa Cruz, which is good for about 3,500 pounds in the most basic variant, while the most capable versions can tow up to 5,000 pounds. The same thing is true with the payload capacity, which should go somewhere between 1,500 and 1,700 pounds, depending on the configuration. With a crew cab design, the cargo bed won't be particularly generous with space. Most likely, it will be of the same or very similar length as the Maverick, which means around 4.5 feet. Release date and price. The new Jeep Comanche is expected to come pretty soon, probably by the end of the year, as a 2025 model. As for the price, affordability is the key in this segment of small pickups. The 2024 Maverick will start at around $25,000 and we presume that's also what Jeep management projects for the new pickup. And with all the design characteristics we've just talked about, the most basic variations indeed would come with a similar sticker price. Thanks for watching and see you next time.